So if you watched that battle I posted a while back, I uh, lost my earring during it. I've had these earrings for like two years. What's up guys? My name is Kai and I just got back from a 12 day road trip from the bottom of the west coast to the top back down to the bottom. That's from San Diego to Seattle and back down. I've always wanted to do a road trip, but I never had an excuse until my aunt wanted to give us a table and I volunteered to go pick it up. Before I went off the road trip, I did a lot of research beforehand, looking on YouTube videos and blogs about how to make the most and conveniently navigate your road trip. And one of the biggest tips that kept popping up was that you should bring good company. And it makes sense why road tripping with friends is an important tip. It's safer, you save money uh, on gas and lodging, and you'd be in good company throughout the ride. But unfortunately, nobody was available and I would be going on this road trip alone. So I packed my bags, packed the car, headed out, and went on the road for 20 hours up, 20 hours down. But now that I am back, I'm safe, I'm alive, didn't lose any limbs, I can attest to you guys that road tripping alone is actually something that's super valuable. The first reason why I'd highly recommend road tripping alone is because one, you are on your own schedule. This means that you don't have to oblige to the schedules of others. And if you're ever on the street and you want to do something, but somebody else wants to do something else, you want to go somewhere, your friends want to go somewhere else, you never have to split the decision. Road tripping alone means that your trip is entirely in your hands and you can take it wherever you want to go. Being a solo traveler allows you access to a lot more places that you wouldn't be able to go in as a group. For example, I didn't have a lot of places to stay while I was road tripping. I didn't book my accommodations in advance, which I don't recommend. I feel like you should have those settled as soon as you can. But I'm lucky enough to have gone on Facebook, looked into my communities of breakers and schoolmates and hit them up for whenever I was coming to town, very last minute. And I really appreciate all of you guys who opened your doors to me. And I'm sure it was a lot easier for you to do so because I was alone and not with more people. That is one of the reasons why I believe road tripping alone is very beneficial because you are the boss of your trip. And that means that you can take it wherever you want it to go. And you can go on whatever tangents you want without any pressure of having to hold a group back. And this actually segues into number two very well, which is it is very easy for you to make connections. Hello. I don't know if you've ever been in a group of friends outside, maybe like a tea shop or a restaurant and you are with them, but you see other people that you want to talk to, but you really can't and you really don't want to because you're already with friends. That is not the case when you are alone. If you ever want to go up to somebody and talk to them, you can because you don't have the obligation to stay with the pack. Because I wasn't already part of a road trip group I was traveling with, I was able to meet and connect with new people, new communities that I feel like I wouldn't have had the opportunity to if otherwise. It is much easier to go down the rabbit hole by yourself because with a group, y'all might not fit. Number three, I would say is a huge, huge factor and benefit to traveling alone is that you learn self-sufficiency. You don't have anybody to depend on, to keep track of things for you or drive for you. You are by yourself until you find a way to connect with other people. As daunting as that sounds, it's not so bad. When you're actually doing it, you're not thinking and you're not scared about the struggles that you'll be facing. You're just dealing with those struggles. So if you're looking for a way to improve your self-sufficiency, I would highly recommend going on a road trip alone because traveling alone forces you to be self-sufficient. And during all that time being alone in your car and on the road, you have access to what I believe personally is one of the most valuable things you can have, especially when you're my age, an adolescent or somebody just trying to find their path. And that's the space to discover yourself. You don't have to obligate yourself to other people's agendas. You are on your own journey. You are in the car alone. That means you get to listen to what you want. You get to think about what you want. Because I was on a road trip alone, I did a lot of things that I feel I wouldn't have been able to do if I were with friends, which is like listen to a 24 hour audiobook on Benjamin Franklin's life. Even with my closest friends, I, I feel like it'd be really hard to listen to that just casually. But because I was alone, I was able to learn while driving. And in the silence, I was able to think 
my own thoughts. And seeing all those different environments fly by and experiencing all these things in your own headspace is so powerful for your growth. In conclusion, while traveling with friends is the popular choice. I believe road tripping alone offers so many unique benefits that can truly, truly shape and form the foundations of who you become as an individual for the better. To those of you all who met with me, housed me, took care of me, talked to me on this trip, I can't thank you enough and I'll never forget the times we had and I plan on paying it forward, so don't worry. While I was on the road for hours, not really having that much time to sit down and edit, I'm now buried in footage and I have to find my way through all of this stuff. And I apologize for the lateness for the Crossroads podcast. If you haven't watched that video of my announcement, I am launching a podcast. Now that I'm back, I am going to go 100% on this and get this out to you guys by the end of this week, which is the second week of October. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at vertigo.vision for regular updates. And uh, my website is also the same name, vertigo.vision, and that's where the Crossroads podcast will be hosted. On top of that, it'll be posted on YouTube, Spotify, once we hit five episodes, Apple Podcasts, and all of your favorite streaming sites. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Please let me know how you felt about this video and what other videos you'd like to see. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and best of luck on all of your journeys. I will be rooting for you. Peace.